other collateral ligaments of the thumb fairly common uh, the incidence of ulnar collateral uh, vis a vis radial collateral ligaments is 10 is to 1 so radial collateral ligament injuries are uh, fairly uncommon compared to the more common ulnar collateral ligament injuries so we talk about these injuries these are caused by a sudden forced radial deviation of the thumb and commonly occurs due to a uh, fallen or stretched hand with the thumb in abducted position now these have various eponyms they have been called skier's thumb but can also occur more commonly with ball games uh, especially in tropical countries where skiing we don't do that uh, now this is caused by this kind of injury typically whatever be the mechanism of injury what is happening is the thumb is levered into abduction against the ski pole or similar object could be a ball or anything there's a sudden uh, abduction injury to the thumb and the ulnar collateral ligament tears the term gamekeeper's thumb is reserved for chronic injuries and this was initially reported by, by campbell in a series of 24 scottish grammar, you know uh, gamekeepers who were uh, you know ringing the necks of the rabbits and other wild fowl etc and having this injury but the term gamekeeper's thumb is uh, referring to mainly chronic cases the skier's thumb refers to mainly acute cases now before we uh, delve further into this topic uh, we have to be very clear with the concept of the steiner's lesion uh many people think you know steiner's lesion is a bony avulsion or is something which you can see on an x ray but that's not the case so basically uh, steiner uh, in uh, 1962 reported in the jbjs british edition he reported in uh, 25 cases of 39 cases which he encountered in complete ucl rupture this finding basically what happens is that the adductor aponeurosis is interposed between the two torn ends of the ucl and because the adductor aponeurosis is interposed between the two ends proper healing is not possible so i've got a short video clip which shows the animation you know so basically we'll go into that uh, just for the sake of clarity you can see that is the ulnar collateral ligament and there we can see is the adductor aponeurosis that is the normal anatomy now what happens if we have an abduction injury to the thumb like that and the ligament tears and when it snaps back you have the adductor aponeurosis which is interposed and that is the steiner lesion and obviously because of the interposed uh, aponeurosis the ligament doesn't heal in order to heal correctly the steiner lesion needs to be addressed uh, surgically so with that background we'll go into the video sometimes you know x rays are usually normal unless it's a very chronic case with obvious you know lateral subluxation uh, but uh, in doubtful cases you could give local anesthetic you know and once the pain is taken care of you could do a stress view this is more academic but mostly uh, it is a clinical diagnosis if you have the services of a very good ultrasonographist uh, uh, then you know you can resort to uh, a usg scan or even an mri scan and that gives you a very good clear definition of the torn ligament it can also identify a thinner lesion so the patient in question is a 34 year old male he presented roughly about 3 3 weeks 3 uh, and a half weeks after the injury and he's a marine engineer by profession so this is the video so i'll just play the video so you could see he was complaining of tender on the tenderness on the ulna aspect of the wrist and he couldn't um, grip anything and on clinical examination you could see that there's no firm end point on uh, radial deviation and there was frank opening up of the joint and also the thing to remember is with ligament tears like this you often get a it's not a isolated ligament but also a, a dorsal capsis also involved which gives rise to an appearance of a slight volar subluxation of the thumb itself and the tenderness is maximally on the ulnar side clinically it is not possible to uh, identify a steiner lesion by palpation but you know that is more of a radiological finding either usg or a uh, uh, encountered at surgery or you can use an mri to diagnose pre operatively so this is on screening with the cm you can see uh, when we are applying the stress stress uh, the joint was completely opening up on the ulnar side and we also tested the stability uh, you know uh, where we could see some bolar translocation so this is the incision it's a lazy as incision so it's a dorso radial incision the central part is uh, transverse and uh, distally it is the follows the mid axial line so this is a lazy as incision of the dorsal radial uh, dorsal ulnar aspect of the thumb now once you open the skin the first thing you encounter is the uh, digital nerve the cutaneous nerve so you have to be careful you know in preserving this nerve if you can it's a 
uh, cutaneous uh, uh, nerve which has to be identified and gently retracted to either side. This side we are probably really, we are just using a retractor to retract it to the ulnar side. Now next what we have is the adductor aponeurosis itself. So once you have dissected it, uh, you can pass a hemostat and the adductor aponeurosis, the tendon inserts into the ulnar sesamoid, the volar aspect. Now that has to be incised in order to reveal the torn end of a uh, ulnar collateral ligament in a stenal lesion. So because this is the interposed ligament, uh, the uh, aponeurosis, which is uh, interposed between the two torn ends of the ligament. So that's what's being done. The adductor aponeurosis is being incised sharply. Once you've done that and you've retracted the two ends of the ap uh, aponeurosis, underneath that you encounter the torn retracted end of the ulnar collateral ligament. So we'll zoom in. Once we have retracted the ulnar collateral ligament, you can see with careful retraction, that is the adductor aponeurosis which is being retracted. Sorry, the video is a little bit blurred here. But right there at the base, you can see the torn ligament. There, there. That is the retracted uh, proximal end. And distally, there is a small stump of about three or four millimeter. You can see that there. So it's uh, not evolved from the bone. There is a small stump, but the stump is very small, about three or four millimeters, three millimeters. So this is a three-week-old injury. Now, various studies uh, report a cutoff of six weeks to calling it a chronic. So this would still not classify as a chronic injury. And we've used a suture anchor to repair it. And suture anchors have made life very easy for hand surgeon. The anchor we are using is a Depuy Mitec uh, micro anchor. It's a bioabsorbable anchor. Uh, it is a 1.3 millimeter anchor. So ideally, I would recommend a 1.8 millimeter anchor, which is a metal anchor. This is a 1.3 millimeter bioabsorbable anchor and comes with two needles with two threads, uh, non-absorbable. So this is what we're going to use to repair the ligament. So this is the pilot hole being drilled. Uh, now, if it's evolves from the bone, you have a crater. When it's not evolves from the bone, you just drill slightly distilled to the attachment of the insertion of the UCL and then you insert this anchor. Before these anchors were available, we would have to resort to drilling two holes and using a, a button on the other side to tie it over. But now these have made life so simple. So these are two needles which come with non-observable sutures. So what we do is we take the suture and pass it through the stump of the uh, distal end of the UCL. So that's what we're going to do. So we, sec we pass the uh, non observable sutures, uh, both the needles, one after the other, to the stump, the distal stump, to get a good hold. And then we pass it to the, both the, uh, on both sides, to get, get a good hold distally to the re remaining stump of the UCL. Then we pass the needles to the proximal part of the UCL. You can see that. You get a nice generous bite. Repeat the process again. And the important thing is you have to be very uh, familiar with the anatomy of the UCL. The UCL actually has two components, the proper uh, ulnar collateral ligament and an accessory, accessory collateral ligament. Now both have different roles uh, and now it is important if you want to get a good repair the thumb should be held in about 30 degrees of flexion and that is the position in which it is maximum the proper ulnar collateral ligament is maximum stretched and you want to repair the thumb in that position in flexion and now the knots are being tied and once you have done this you can reinforce it with uh, further sutures So these are the knots being tied. Okay. Once you're happy with the repair, uh, all you need to do is cut the knots and then do a very careful repair of the adductor aponeurosis. Okay. 
so you can see that this is the ligament which has been repaired nicely it's a nice solid repair that is the distal part and that is the proximal the next thing is to repair the adductor aponeurosis very carefully so they've gone backwards okay so that's what we have done we have repaired the adductor neuporosis again with non observable sutures and once that is complete that is the final position the adductor aponeurosis has been repaired nicely and the ulnar collateral ligament repaired is below that while taking a bite in the adductor aponeurosis you have to make sure you don't include the repaired ulnar collateral ligament in the same bite so that is something you need to take care about and then the next thing is to just repair the skin but before we do that we need to test to keep it in flexion and then stress the thumb now this time you will see a firm end point because your repair is good and it is holding and now uh, with anchors there is a tendency to go for slightly more aggressive mobilization so this is 3 months follow up now normally after repair you would immobilize it in, in about 4 to 6 weeks in a spica cast but with anchors and if you get a good repair you can even uh, go for a slightly more aggressive controlled rehabilitation program where you supervise the movements but you give them early so suture anchors in these kind of injuries are very useful and uh, they have made life very much easier so that was just a demonstration of a surgical technique so i'll stop sharing my screen and then uh, what we will do is now uh, i will invite my friend salish to take over and do his presentation on uh, scaphoid non unions uh, orif and bone grafting and we'll take questions at the end mm -hmm.